Assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to discuss weight volume relationships for soils today is part 1 of the lecture it is a slightly lengthy topic so i have divided it in two parts uh, to make it easier to understand today is week 5 lecture 9 of geotechnical engineering 1 so let's begin So commonly, whenever we discuss something, uh, some theory, some new idea, some new uh, principles, usually it comes to the mind of our students that what are their applications, why we are studying that. So in case of weight volume relationships, uh, it's very important to find the material weight for embankments. You know embankments are raised structures like this. Uh, usually you construct embankment for support of construction of roads as well just like Peshawar Islamabad motorway you can see it is being constructed on embankment on raised portion also we construct embankments for dams as well here is an embankment for the reservoir dam reservoir which you can see over here which is retaining water so we bring material and we dump it over here so for stability calculation uh, in for amount of material to be placed etc you will require the weight of that material and that weight will include the weight of soil solids and the weight of water as well okay so this is uh, why it is important that if you have one quantity like volume you should be able to calculate its weight or vice versa if you have weight you should be able to calculate the volume okay because in case of water the important property is volume you add water in liters and something and drain it in liters as well similarly in case of soil solids the important property is the weight of the solids and that is basically used in the stability calculations which you will be doing later on in other subjects so that is why it is very very important uh, for embankments it is also important to study those relationships uh, to find the quantity of water required for target density. Uh, when you compact soils, uh, you require some certain amount of uh, moisture to be present in that soil, which is usually known as optimum moisture content, uh, which you will be studying later on in the compaction problems. So it is very very important to estimate the amount of water which should, should be adding or removing from that soil to compact it to the proper density which is required at site. Also in ca case of borrowing fill conditions as well, when you bring a soil from somewhere it is called borrowed soil and when you place it somewhere else it is known as fill soil. So usually we have borrow and fill problems. We borrow the soil from somewhere and we dumped it somewhere. So when you borrow it, it may have a different compaction, different volume, different amount of voids. And when you place it, it may be required to have more compacted farm and less voids. So in that case, you should be able to know that how much volume of soil you should be bringing uh, with the initial void ratio and how much soil should be required to attain sufficient amount of compaction with the given amount of volume and height of embankment being uh, constructed at a particular location. So when you bring a soil its volume will be more but when you compact it its volume reduces. So you should know that how much soil will be required under the given void ratio under the given voids which what you are doing when you are compacting the soil you are reducing the voids so anyhow we will discuss that later in the detail as well we will uh, study some numerical problems on that as well so basically it is very very important for that case then the weight volume relationship is important to calculate the weight of soil under various moisture conditions okay uh, the weight of the soil is comprised of two elements one is weight of soil solids which remains constant and another is the uh, weight of the water. So when you increase the amount of water in a given sample, 
its weight will increase. So under different moisture condition, the soil can have different weights. So that's why it is very, very important to uh, understand these relations. So if we have the volume of water or uh, volume of soil solids, we should be able to basically calculate its weight. It is also important to calculate the important parameters for estimation of settlement and consolidation as well, uh, like void ratio, porosity, volume of voids. They are very, very important when you will be doing later on the settlement calculation that how much your uh, settlement will be occurring in a particular soil under a particular load condition. Then you will require those important relationships through which you can basically uh, determine the properties required for those solutions. So moving on. What we know so far, we uh, discussed the soil uh, three phase diagram in the previous lecture and we said that if you have a soil given to you, it may have soil solids and these solids may have some water inside as well which will be volume of water and then there will be some air voids as well which will be basically volume of air voids. So if we put them separately, okay, so this is volume of soil solids then this is volume of water and this is volume of air for sake of simplicity okay we have separated the voids uh, which includes air and water from the solids so the total volume will be equal to volume of solids plus volume of voids which is basically volume of solids and volume of voids or you can write it the total volume as volume of solids plus volume of water and volume of air as well if half of the voids or some of the voids is filled with water and some of the voids are filled with air then you can write it in this form as well okay similarly on the weight side you can see the total weight is w because there is no weight of air we are considering it to be weightless in relation to the weight of solids and weight of water so the total weight will comprise of weight of solids plus weight of water which is mentioned over here so this is what we have studied so far what we have derived so far in terms of the equations is that we discuss the moisture content which is basically equal to weight of water divided by weight of soil solids which is weight of water divided by weight of soil solids uh, usually uh, written with multiplied with 100 uh, in the form of percentage as well but we will be using it as a ratio in the following equations then we also discuss that uh, the bulk density or the total density is the total weight divided by the total volume okay and we also discuss the dry density which is weight of soil solids divided by the total volume okay and similarly we also discuss weight of uh, unit weight of soil solids which will be weight of solids divided by volume of solids as well okay and we also discussed about porosity and void ratio and we said that the porosity is equal to volume of voids divided by the total volume okay and we also discussed the void ratio which is basically the volume of voids divided by volume of soil solids and we also derived the equation for the saturation ratio which we represented as volume of water divided by the total volume of voids okay and we said that if volume of water is equal to zero saturation ratio will be equal to zero if volume of voids total all the voids are filled with water then in that case the saturation ratio will be equal to one so this is what we have so far derived now we will have to basically derive relationships correlation between these various properties and relating them to each other so if we have one property we can calculate the another property from that so first of all deriving relationship between the wire ratio e and porosity n so on the right uh, please refer to the phase diagram in all the calculations which we are doing over here so we are going to uh, derive a relationship between these two property uh, the wire ratio uh, which is represented by e which is volume of voids divided by volume of soil solids and porosity which is volume of voids divided by the total volume of the sample so let's derive first uh, by taking the void ratio now void ratio we know is equal to the volume of void divided by volume of soil solids as we derived this equation previously now simplifying this equation further we can see 
volume of voids is equal to volume of voids over here and volume of soil solids this it can be written as total volume minus volume of voids as well okay so we want to basically take the volume common from this equation so that's why we want to write it like this because we want to eliminate volume of soil solids over here so the equation will take this one okay now dividing uh, numerator and denominator by the total volume so that will become vv divided by v divided by v divided by v minus vv divided by v now v divided by v will cancel and that will become equal to 1 this is vv divided by v and vv divided by v now we know that volume of voids divided by total volume or vv divided by v is equal to porosity okay so we can write this as n so this is n divided by 1 minus n okay so very simple vice versa you can derive another relation as well between the uh, taking the porosity on the left side and y ratio on the right so you will start you'll be starting with this equation vv divided by v in that case okay and in this case uh, you can solve it for yourself I will just give you a guidance over here how we arrive at this you will have to write this equation as vv divided by this is basically equal to vs or vv plus vs okay so you can basically if you write it like this and you uh, take v as common or divided by v as v s will get cancelled and you can basically get this relation okay because if you divide everything by v s it will become on the top it will become v v divided by v s which is equal to e and on the bottom it is v v plus v s so if you divide both by uh, say v s then v s divided by v s will cancel plus v s divided by v v that will once again become equal to v s v v divided by v s that will once again become equal to e so n is equal to e divided by 1 plus e okay so you if you have the value of y ratio you can calculate porosity from this equation or otherwise if you have porosity you can use this relation and calculate the y ratio as well so two important relations which we have derived uh, so far so moving on to the unit rate now uh, we have to derive relationship between the bulk unit weight and dry unit weight of the soil <clears throat> so first we just refresh our memory that what is bulk unit weight the bulk unit weight is total weight of the sample divided by the total volume okay this is in situ unit weight under the normal moisture condition it may be fully saturated may be dry whatever so this is called the bulk unit weight uh, on the other hand the dry unit weight is equal to the weight of solids divided by the total volume okay excluding the weight of water so only the solids so that is dry unit weight or the unit weight of the soil in dry form so when the soil is in dry form then weight of the water will be equal to zero so the weight is equal to ws plus w w because this is equal to zero then weight is equal to ws so because there is no water that's why we call it dry soil and we also know that the moisture content which is represented by small italic w is equal to ww which is weight of water divided by ws which is weight of soil salt so weight of water divided by weight of soil solids that is equal to moisture content as we discussed in the previous slides as well now you want to derive relationship between the bulk unit weight and dry unit weight so let's take the equation of bulk unit weight and further solve it so the equation of bulk unit weight is equal to the total weight divided by the total volume now we know that the total weight is equal to weight of soil solids plus weight of water weight of soil solids plus weight of water if you add them together that will give you the total weight now we want to basically derive equation of a moisture content so we clearly know that we need this form over here so that will be if we take ws common from here so if i take ws common from this equation over here so that will become equal to 1 and that will be equal to ww divided by ws divided by the volume now you know that this is equal to this okay this is equal to the uh, moisture content so replacing this 
with uh, a small italic W which is moisture content so WS into 1 plus moisture content divided by V. Now you can see over here this quantity is basically equal to the dry unit weight. So replacing this with gamma D in this equation this gamma will become equal to or bulk unit weight will become equal to gamma D into 1 plus W or 1 plus moisture content. Okay. Or if you want to derive equation for gamma D, so you will keep gamma D on this side of the equation, okay, and shift this 1 plus W to this side. So gamma D will be equal to gamma divided by 1 plus moisture content. So gamma D is equal to gamma divided by 1 plus W. So one relation is gamma is equal to gamma D into 1 plus W or if you have the value of gamma and you want to derive dry unit weight which we usually require in earthwork problem. We require the dry unit weight of the soil which we are going to be using. So in that case usually you have bulk unit weight and usually you are required to have to calculate the dry unit weight from that and you usually have moisture content as well. These two uh, properties are easily determined in the laboratory while for this property you will have to basically uh, uh, keep the uh, uh, soil for drying and oven for 24 hours so uh, otherwise if you have these two properties which you can easily determine quickly in the lab then you can basically calculate gamma d very easily from this equation so if you have uh, uh, bulk unit weight and moisture content you can calculate the dry unit weight very easily using this equation okay so we have derived equation or correlation between dry unit weight and bulk unit weight over here so another correlation, another uh, very important equation. Moving on, uh, now deriving relationship among unit weight, wide ratio and moisture content and specific gravity. Now taking the same three phase diagram over here, weight of solids, weight of water and zero weight of air. Similarly on volume side you've got volume of solids, volume of water and volume of voids or volume of uh, volume of air voids and or the total volume of voids over here. So now we have to play around over here slightly with this diagram to introduce moisture content specific gravity and unit weight of water over here to derive the correlation. So why how we will do it? Let's say that divide all volumes by Vs okay on this side. So divide everything by Vs. So uh, volume of soil solids Vs divided by Vs that will become equal to 1. So because this is volume of soil solids if I divide it by Vs, Vs by Vs that will become equal to 1 okay. And then you have volume of white divided by volume of solids. This is volume of whites if I divide it by the volume of soil solids Vs then VV divided by Vs is equal to Y ratio. Okay, so this property this will become equal to E and this will become equal to 1. Okay, so the total volume will be equal to Vs plus VV which is equal to Vs is equal to 1 and VV is equal to E. Okay, so we can basically represent the total volume using this equation. So remember this now coming to the weight side. Okay, uh, we are just basically calculating these uh, parameters in the terms of y ratio and moisture content and specific gravity over here. This is our purpose because we want to drive correlation. Now coming to the solid side, uh, weight of soil solids <coughs> that is equal to Ws and weight of water that is equal to Ww and the total weight is equal to this or simply is equal to Ws plus Ww. Now first taking on the Ws okay weight of soil solids. Now we know that specific gravity that is equal to unit weight of soil solids specific gravity of soil solids or Gs as we discussed previously. Gs is equal to unit weight of soil solids divided by unit weight of water okay. Now further simplifying and writing gamma s okay. Now gamma s is unit weight of soil solids which is equal to Ws divided by Vs which is weight of soil solids divided by volume of soil solids okay. So if you write it like this divided by the unit weight of water which will be simply written is equal to Gs. Now further simplifying and keeping Ws on this side and shifting Vs on this side of the equation. So Ws will be equal to Vs into Gs into gamma W. 
Now you can see over here Vs is equal to 1. So we simply put Vs over here is equal to 1. Okay. So if I put Vs is equal to 1 in this equation, then Ws will be equal to Gs into gamma W, which is this equation. Okay. So it means that weight of soil solids will be equal to specific gravity of soil solids multiply by the unit weight of water. Both very easily determined properties. Unit weight of uh, water is constant, 9.8 kil one kilonewton per cubic meter, and Gs for the soil usually it is known to be range between 2.5 and 2.8. Okay, so you can easily determine the value of Gs as well and it remains constant for a particular soil because the uh, volume of solids and the unit weight of solids, this remains usually constant. The weight of solids and the volume of solids in the given soil is constant. It doesn't change with drying or wetting the soil. <coughs> Similarly, now coming to weight of water. Okay, now we know that moisture content is equal to weight of water divided by weight of soil solids weight of water divided by weight of soil solids if you take that that is equal to moisture content of the soil now weight of the water keep it on this side and shift ws to the other side of the equation okay so if i shift it then it will become weight of water is equal to moisture content into weight of soil solids now we just determined weight of soil solids over here using gs gamma w so replacing this with gs gamma w so weight of water is equal to moisture content times specific gravity of soil solids times the unit weight of water. So we can write it like this. Okay. So this will be very important. This is what we are using in the next slide to determine the relationship between the unit weight, water ratio, moisture content and specific gravity. <coughs> okay. Now first to determine the relationship for calculation of bulk and dry density. Okay. Now once again taking the same equation. Bulk unit weight is equal to total weight divided by total volume. Total weight divided by total volume. Okay. Now you can see the total weight is equal to WW plus WS. So writing them over here. Now you already know that we determined WS to be this. Okay. So replacing this over here and we determined WW is equal to gamma into GS gamma W which is over here can see them over here as well okay so replacing them ws and ww or weight of soil solids and weight of the water replace them with gs gamma w and w gs gamma w so the equation will become equal to this now gs gamma w is common in these two so take it common then it will become one plus unit weight of water uh, sorry moisture content into gs gamma w divided by v over here, we already determined this V to be 1 plus Y ratio. This is 1 and this is equal to Y ratio E. Okay, so we did discuss this on previous slide. So the total volume is equal to 1 plus E. So written 1 plus Y ratio or 1 plus E over here. So unit weight or bulk unit weight is equal to 1 plus moisture content into specific gravity of soil solids into unit weight of water divided by 1 plus Y ratio. So if you have these quantities moisture content specific gravity unit weight of water which is constant and the y ratio of given soil you can basically determine its bulk unit weight or if you want to derive the dry unit weight which is usually required in fill problems and borrow and fill problems then we know that the dry unit weight is weight of soil solids divided by the total volume weight of soil solids divided by the total volume over here so we already discussed and derived that weight of soil solids is equal to gs into gamma w so gs into unit weight of water divided by v we already calculated this to be over here as 1 plus e so gs into gamma w divided by 1 plus e so there is another correlation okay so these are very important correlations which we have derived over here between the unit weight specific gravity moisture content and y ratio of a given soil Okay. Now, why the uh, moisture content is not over here? Because for dry soil, the moisture content will be equal to zero. So that's why we don't have that. Okay. Or simply, you can uh, derive it from this equation as well. You know, if the soil is dry, so moisture content will be equal to zero. So that will be dry soil and gamma d and one plus w into g s gamma w. So because the uh, w will be equal to zero, so if you replace this by zero, this equation and this equation will become same, which is equal to g s gamma w divided by one plus e. So you can derive those relations 
relationships using multiple approaches over here. <clears throat> so hopefully you are not lost till this point uh, and uh, I will recommend that you exercise these once at least for yourself. So you will when you exercise it and when you draw this diagram for yourself it will become very very easier. Okay. So <clears throat> don't get confused and it's very very easy to derive. So far you have this diagram and those equations which I discussed on the third slide of my presentation which we already know which we already derived. If you know those equations and if you can uh, draw this three phase diagram they are very easy to determine. Okay. So now moving on uh, over here uh, we have to derive another uh, correlation between the saturation ratio uh, wide ratio moisture content and specific gravity so first of all <coughs> if you have if you are to derive the volume of water in a given sample okay this is also very important so volume of water you know you can write this because you know the unit weight of water gamma w okay you can write it as volume of water uh, or sorry rate of water divided by the volume of water in a given soil okay so you can write it like this okay or the uh, unit weight of anything is like this yeah, it's the weight of that thing divided by volume occupied by that thing so if you want to determine over here from this equation the volume of water you just take it over here and bring gamma w over here so you will have this equation okay now you know the weight of water over here we already derived it is equal to moisture content into gs into gamma w on the previous slide so just replace this with this and you know unit weight of water that is equal to constant gamma w so these two will get cancelled and it's equal to moisture content times specific gravity so if you know the moisture content of a given soil which you will be determining in the laboratory it's a very easy experiment just you can derive it in two three steps and if you have specific gravity which you also will be deriving in the lab uh, using various techniques, pachnometer etc. So these properties can be very easily determined. So for given soil if you have moisture content and specific gravity of soil solids if you multiply them you can get the volume of water okay. So which we can write over here on this side of the equation as well okay. Uh, so now because I required this for degree of saturation because degree of saturation equation I want to derive now the correlation between wide ratio degree of saturation moisture content and specific gravity so obviously I'll have to start with the equation of saturation or you know the saturation ratio of a given soil that is equal to uh, the volume of water divided by volume of voids volume of water divided by volume of voids okay which you can see over here so we already derived volume of water is equal to uh, uh, moisture content into gs wgs or you can see it over here as well divided by volume of voids volume of voids is equal to e which we already derived previously okay so replacing this over here is this so s is equal to moisture content into specific gravity size that divided by e or you can write this equation you can shift the e to this hand side of the equation so it will become s into e is equal to moisture content into specific gravity of size solids or se is equal to w into gs okay so you can simply uh, learn this relation by this uh, equation as well like structure engineers se equals to wacky guys okay w and gs guys okay so you can you can have your own terminology as well to remember this equation but this is very very important correlation we will be using this uh, abundantly in the coming lectures so do remember se is equal to w times gs okay so this is very uh, important correlation which we have derived over here now moving on same correlation for the soil which is fully saturated okay uh, over here you can see the soil is not fully saturated not all the voids are filled with water over here there is no water okay but if all the voids are filled with water then this soil will be fully saturated so there will be weight of water and weight of soil solids and there will be volume of voids and volume of soil solids and all the volume of voids will be filled with the volume of water so vv will be equal to vw okay and we already derived that vv is equal to e over here so Similarly, only this hand side of the equation will change because you know unit weight of water is equal to gamma W is equal to 
or unit weight of water is equal to weight of water divided by volume of water. If you shift volume of water to this side of the equation, that will be equal to weight of water is equal to volume of water into unit weight of water. Now you know the volume of water is equal to E. So replacing this E over here uh, with volume of water, so weight of water will be equal to E into gamma W. While this remains same, G as gamma W, which we derived previously, this one over here is changed for saturated, fully saturated soil in which all the voids are filled with water. Okay, so you know uh, when the all the voids are filled with the water, then the unit weight of that soil is equal to gamma sat or saturated unit weight is equal to once again weight of the soil divided by the volume of soil. Okay, but weight of the fully saturated soil. Now total weight is equal to Ws plus Ww, which is weight of soil solids okay plus weight of water okay so you know these both quantities over here okay weight of water and weight of soil solids so you replace this ws with gs gamma w and ww by e into gamma w now over here in this equation you can see that gamma w is common okay on this side and on this side so taking it common so you will have gs into e into gamma w similarly for the bottom volume which is equal to 1 plus e once again so replacing this by 1 plus e and 1 plus e over here so gamma sat is equal to gs plus e into gamma w divided by 1 plus e okay so this is very easily being determined over here vice versa you can uh, derive it from the previous equation as well over here you see what we have over here 1 plus w into gs gamma w now you can replace the value of w in this equation okay with se into this equation se divided by gs okay and you can determine it from that equation as well by putting s is equal to 1 so you can calculate it from here there as well but coming back over here so gs plus e into gamma w divided by 1 plus e this is the equation which we had okay so this is the equation for the saturated unit weight if you have uh, unit weight of soil solids uh, wide ratio unit weight of water which is constant 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter in the mks uh, sorry si system or if you are taking the uh, the british system then it is equal to 62.4 pounds per cubic feet so you know the unit weight of water and wide ratio if you know this you can basically calculate the saturated unit weight of given soil uh, so from for the second relation for the uh, uh, relation between saturation ratio, uh, wide ratio, moisture content and specific gravity. Previously we derived S is equal to W into GS. Now we know for fully saturated soil S will be equal to 1. So if I put S is equal to 1 in this equation, for fully saturated soil the same equation will be equal to E is equal to WGS or engineers equal wacky guys. Okay, So we are all equal we are fully saturated okay then we are talking about r okay so just uh, to understand this on a lighter note so e is equal to w into gs <clears throat> now these are the correlations which we have derived uh, so far over here relationships uh, so we will try a simple numerical problem uh, to use this we will have other numerical problems coming in the next lectures as well so let's say if you are asked that prove that gamma sat is equal to e by term moisture content into 1 plus moisture content divided by 1 plus wide ratio into gamma w okay so let's say you are asked to prove that so from just previous slide we proved that gamma set you know, because we are talking about gamma set over here so let's start with that equation in the previous slide we said gamma set is equal to gs plus e into gamma w divided by 1 plus e so using this over here and we'll put the values over here now because the soil is saturated soil fully saturated soil okay so you know over here in this equation there is no gs okay so that means that from this equation i have to eliminate gs now we know that e is equal to w into gs so gs will be equal to e divided by w so this e divided by w if i replace this over here in this equation this will become gamma set is equal to e by w plus e into gamma w divided by 1 plus e 
okay and if you solve this equation if i take e by w common from this equation okay then if i take e by w common from this side this will become equal to 1 from here if i take e by w common i will replace with uh, left with w divided by 1 plus e so e by w is taken common so a by w into 1 plus w into gamma w so hence proved that gamma sad is also equal to this so this basically shows that if you have those relationships you can just play around with them and derive correlation between the various important parameters so for example if you don't have specific gravity but you have only the wide ratio moisture content uh, because unit weight of water is constant so if you have those quantities you can still calculate the saturated unit weight of the soil using this correlation as well okay so there are multiple approaches through which you can derive those relationships which are very easy to do okay so in next class we will discuss some further correlations so stay tuned for the upcoming lectures wish you all the best thank you very much for listening